And we are back here in the second hour of the Party on Stage of Mark. Yes, we are. I am your host, Warren Gordon. And I am Chelsea Skeens. This is the party, indeed. This is our second hour. <laughs> it is. It is 8 o'clock. We like to repeat ourselves. We do, indeed. Just to make sure, just in we case like you We like reiterating it. things yeah. numerous times. So we're going to reiterate this. The fact that we have just come up with a new idea on the party. We're going to give it a try. We've seen how, I guess, how successful it's been with the top 20, top 40 radio. Um, so <laughs> we we want to try it in the same vein, but for local artists. Yes. So we are calling it the Party Countdown. Mm-hmm. And basically what it uh, entails is an artist can submit the song that they would like, I guess, eligible for... Yeah for this countdown. And then we're going to have these all up on a big poll on our website, which we will be re- releasing uh, Monday, Monday. Uh, to, I guess, kind of coincide with this countdown. Monday morning. Monday morning. And uh, then people can vote on what songs, and then we're going to play all these songs on May 31st. May 31st. And uh, we'll see what the number one song is in uh, Newfoundland. Newfoundland for the month of May. Yeah, so we're uh, we're gonna see, I guess, what the reception is like for this one countdown. See if it, uh, I guess, merits doing a couple times. What I guess the the reception is like, and we we hope it's gonna be a pretty good reception. Um, mm-hmm. Because you know we think there's a lot of great songs here in Newfoundland that. Uh, deserve to be heard it's true so, yeah we're all about the local scene very much so very much so i'd like to point out that we have a hundred percent canadian content today we're doing on pretty the good. show yeah so that's pretty cool <laughs> so we are sat here in studio with mr adam baxter hello hey how are you <laughs> we're good how are you doing uh i'm great thanks just having a laugh cool that's it partying with you guys on the party <laughs> Cool. So do you just want to, I guess, introduce yourself and talk about your music a little bit? Sure. Uh, Well, like as you guys said, my name is Adam Baxter. Uh, I'm originally from Nova Scotia, believe it or not, but I moved to Newfoundland in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, And in 2013, I moved to Springdale, Newfoundland, where I'm a high school band teacher, which is amazing. And I'm I'm also a singer-songwriter. I've been pretty active around the St. John's music scene uh, since probably about 2005. Mm -hmm. The kind of music I write is kind of like fun folk, rock, pop (laughs) stuff. I don't know. I just I just write songs and I write songs. That's what I do. See. (laughs) (laughs) How long have you been playing music for? Uh, Well. I got my first guitar when I was uh, 15, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to be the best guitar player and the fastest guitar player on the planet, so I worked on that for a few years. Uh, Being pretty frustrated with that, I decided to not be that and learn other stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was 18, I decided to start, actually sorry, when I was 19, I decided to start looking and studying classical music Mm -hmm. at the university level. So I was interested in learning classical guitar, uh, and then probably when I was about 21, I started singing and really writing my own songs. Mm-hmm. I had written a lot of music before that in like punk rock bands and stuff with my friends, but right. nothing really that I would sing. In fact, I wasn't allowed to sing in bands in high school because I was such a horrendous vocalist. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's true, though. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever motivates you, boys. Yeah. Cool. So the last time we talked to you uh, was on our award show, the Parody Award Show. Yes. Yeah, and we were on Skype together. It was great. It was, it was great. Wait, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was I supposed to divulge that I was on Skype? No. Sorry. I wasn't on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually in studio right here. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yeah, you won uh, Song of the Year. I did. Thank you very and, much. It um, means a lot that you guys would give me that award. Yeah. And... So well, I guess what's, what's, what, do you, what have you been up to since then? Well, uh, I'm, I'm still kind of working out my, my own personal funds to get the, the release out. Uh, you know, the, the whole, all the material is written, recorded, uh, mastered. Uh, I've been speaking with my, uh, my graphic designer to kind of work on the, the artwork for it. And when that's done and I have a pool of money saved up myself, uh, then I send it off to get it pressed and then... It's available for purchase via hard copy or download. 
Um, and then, what else am I working on? Well, my main focus is actually my my concert bands at school. That's, mm -hmm. that's the biggest one that I put a lot of work and thought and heart and soul into because mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, uh, conducting a, a, an ensemble is like playing a different instrument, you know what I mean? Right. And, and being able to control that instrument is, is an art form itself, I, I believe. So, uh, I've been really focusing on that a lot because I don't... I, before my job, I didn't have a lot of experience with it. I had a bit. Uh, so I like learning that. And we're doing really, really amazing music. My senior band is doing the film score for Lord of the Rings. And we're doing an cool. orchestral uh, arrangement of Skyfall by Adele. Hmm. And it's like the best piece on the go. <laughs> we started like two weeks ago, and the, they're, they're killing it. And it's, uh, it's just... I don't know, it's really nice. It's it's good when you're in a music class and the kids put down their instrument and like, yeah, that's so wicked. <laughs> and I'm like, that is wicked. And I was really proud of that. And I got a couple other groups that I've been really working with. Um, but the big thing, I'm sure you've all been just biting your nails off. The big thing that I'm, I'm working on now is um, I, I wanted to initially fill up my summer playing music festivals across Newfoundland in, like, in small towns. Uh, not necessarily use ones that you like really hear of a yeah. lot or you know not not your standard like St. John's Cornerbrook, Grand Falls, Gander kind of thing um, so I uh, the government of Newfoundland has a web page uh, that has a huge database of all these music festivals or all these any kind of festival there is right it's a, it's a, it's a division of tourism I believe so I was looking through that and I said hmm and I made a little list I took every weekend and had a sheet of paper and wrote everyone that's out there Wait, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so I, I wrote them down for each one, and then I kind of picked which one I thought would be the coolest to do, or the, just the area that I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. If I had never heard of the area, that was the first place I went. So I, I had probably about eight, and I emailed just eight, mm -hmm. like off the bat. And I said, okay, if I don't hear back from these, I've got a whole checklist. Well, I heard back from the eight, like, like that, wow. with most of them. Um, and so they... Uh, a lot of them, I think one didn't work out, and I opted not to do another one. So I'm doing a total of six, but then I picked up another, which is seven. I, th I believe the, the 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 towns that I'm playing is, I'm obviously doing Springdale, because I live there. Uh, and I'm doing Point Leamington, which is uh, a little bit outside of Grand Falls. Grand Falls. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. Yep. I thought you said you weren't good at geography. <laughs> I have friends who are from that area. <laughs> I don't even have friends. So only, <laughs> I only have best friends, best and they friends. play there music with me. <laughs> so uh, there's Port Leamington and Deer Lake, um, Eastport, Fogo Island. Oh, and uh, one isn't confirmed yet, and I'm still waiting on hearing back from that. So I won't. I won't uh, divulge that at the moment. However, uh, when I was when I had gone through booking these, I decided. Even before I sent these emails out, I decided I'd be like, it would be an amazing idea, not only just to go and perform these shows and get the whole experience and have a laugh, because it is all just a, an amazing experience, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I said, uh, and I mean, uh, if you ever meet my girlfriend, she'll tell you that um, that I just I just kind of barged in the room and said, it would be amazing if I just bought all this camera equipment and just filmed <laughs> and made a documentary of it. And I'm in the process of getting all this equipment sorted out and just, you know, like, uh, I, well, I have a, a really good camera and I bought a tripod this weekend. So, you know, I'm going to experiment with a bit of video making uh, with hopes of putting this, this whole kind of experience together. I'm not sure if each festival is going to be its own little episode mm -hmm. or if I'm going to put it all together in one big product. But um, I got a lot of positive feedback from it from these festivals kind of saying... Like, they're like, I've never had anybody, like, approach us to do this. Because they have people, like, offer to play, but no one to come and be like, hey, I want to make a documentary of your town right. and your festival. So I think it's going to be pretty pretty amazing, actually. Like, even if it's a complete flop and the documentary isn't very good, like, I mean, the experience of doing it all mm -hmm. and interviewing all these people and kind of getting the intertwinings of these small towns kind of all within, you know, my grasp, right. I think, is just going to be an amazing experience. God bless being a teacher, bro. It's a good summer <laughs> off, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm also going to try different fries in each jam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's hear a song. This is Adam Baxter coming back for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
back here on the party on Twitter Yes, we are. We're back here with uh, the comedian Adam Baxter. Yes, me. That's all I got. So uh, you were just telling us uh, during the uh, the break there that you're submitting to the party countdown. I am hereby, I hereby officially announce that I'm going to submit a track from my unreleased EP for the party countdown. And yeah, I was I was thinking about giving an Ultimate Warrior style promo uh, in homage of his recent passing. Uh, you know, however, I didn't prepare it and I don't really have that kind of energy right now because I haven't drank a million Red Bull. Or <laughs> you couldn't drink a million Red Bull, but a thousand, sorry. Um, however, I just want to hear by saying that I'm, I'm submitting me song for it and uh, it wants you to vote for it once it's up Monday, first thing. Sweet. So what track are you submitting, Adam? I'm going to submit my, uh, my track... Unless you want to, darling, and that's that's the one I would like to to submit. Cool. Thank so uh, sorry. No, I just wanted to thank you for oh. allowing me to do it. Thank you for agreeing to submit. So uh, a little bit more, I guess, about the EP. Where did you find the inspirations for the songs that you have written? Well, they're right now. They're the five songs that are going on the EP. One is coming back for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I could do a quick thing for each song if you wish, because uh, sure. I can do that. Uh, coming back for you, I wrote right after I moved to Springdale. I was missing a lot of my friends, and uh, this is just kind of what came out. And I, I recorded the demo of it in Springdale all myself in my classroom, and then I came to the, uh, exactly a year ago from now. I came to St. John's and I put a thing on Facebook saying, hey boys, who wants to come and be in a music video with me? Because Heavy Weather's shooting one for me. And I got a lot of response, so I said, man, the more the merrier, let's do this. So I did that, uh, and that's what happened. So I came back for them, mm-hmm. and they pulled through for me. My friends, that is. Uh, so that's gonna be on it. Unless You Want To, Darlin, is kind of, is another song I've written since being in Springdale. Uh, and it's just kind of like a play on or like a song about, you know, relationships failing and how, uh, you know, when you look back on a, on a failed relationship, the most, you know, it's, it's too bad that you mainly look at the negative and not the positive that you experience together. Um, another song is I Call This Home, and it's about my parents' house in Nova Scotia. Uh, the other song is called night or there's two others sorry one song is called night song and it's just a folk song about the night using the night as a metaphor or using her as a metaphor for the night so it's talking about the night as if it's a woman or a lady sorry um and i just you know i wanted to write a folk song about the night because everybody writes about daylight and all this healthy stuff and i just didn't want to write about daylight and healthy stuff uh, and the last song I wrote is called for the EP is called Rain of the Rose. It's uh, this this one's kind of loaded in the sense that I wrote it uh, when I was doing my internship at Brother Rice. Mm-hmm. I was uh, we had this how do I put this? We had this project that we had to do where we listened to a Claudio Debussy piece, mm-hmm. and you had to draw a picture. So I wanted to you know set a good example by doing doing this as the children would do it and I drew this picture of roses raining from the sky then I wrote a, then an alternate part of the assignment was you can write a poem with it so I wrote a poem with it and mm-hmm. had it up there and did that I said man I'm going to make that song so I made it a song <laughs> and that's what happened so uh, yeah that's the, that's the, that's where the inspiration for each and every single song of the unreleased EP is from voice cool so now when you like go and want to release the EP and you know how people have the little like subs about each song you can just mm-hmm. copy whatever you just said on the party you just go back that's it and I, I i'm not gonna lie to you i love subs i do I too just <laughs> subway subs are delicious i do the giant chicken <laughs> <laughs> perfect so last night you were at the ship uh you played with sean caspi and uh ian foster and the thieves Yes, and what a great night that was. It was a great night. I think the important question is, did you get fries? Man, I didn't. <sighs> I didn't get fries only because um, when we were leaving and we walked down George Street, the vendors weren't open. Hurtin. You had to you had to go to Smoke's Poutinery. They're open till 4 a.m. Yeah, and we actually... <laughs> 
I hate to say this, but we uh, we just we didn't do it. We just we just made a hasty decision and just we we went for uh, I forget what the place Pizza Supreme I believe it's called. I'm not sure. It's a pizza place pretty much under CBTG. So we we went for there and uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite fries. It, it was matter. <laughs> Yeah, so no fries, unfortunately. I do love French fries, however. Um, you know, ideally uh, cooked in oil with ketchup. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, a good gravy can really highlight the uh, the earthy tones, the taste of the potato once deep fried. What are your opinion on the wing, wing uh, spice dusted fries Where? that you can get? Where are these? At, uh... Winging it, winging it is an option. I have, uh, I have not had a chance to try them, and to be honest with you, the closest winging it to Springdale is Grand Falls. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been there t- once, I think, maybe twice. I think I was going to go twice, but I went once, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't, and I had not had the chance to really try the dusted fries. I tried the Parmesan fries I had there once, and that was really yeah. good. Only us Parmesan fries. Fancy. Yep. So where's the best fries you can get in Springdale? Oh, uh, it's it's at a place called Marie's. Okay. Um, it is, for the longest time, it was just like a straight up like Newfoundland cuisine, fries, dressing, gravy, fish and chips kind of place. And they have a motel on it. So it's called Marie's Motel. But since then, uh, this uh, a family uh, from Toronto who happens to be Asian uh, introduced Asian cuisine. So like you know, North American Chinese food mm-hmm. onto the menu. So now it doubles as like kind of like fries, dressing gravy in Chinese food place. But they legit have the best fries. And I make it well known that I think they have the best fries. I taught a grade seven social studies uh, unit that was on economics on Marie's fries <laughs> and the different levels of the sector. And so, uh, yes. yeah, uh, man, just talk, t- chat about fries, fry party. So I guess the real question is, why aren't you doing a documentary on Newfoundland fries in small places so you could go from town to town and try fries? <laughs> now, I, oddly enough, I'm already one step ahead of you. A mini, <laughs> a mini movie that I want to do with this is, yes, different fries in the places. I find the best fries of each town. And I do a little thing on it where it shows me, you know, we talk about the fries, we show the fries, we taste them. Um, and then, when we're all done, we take the best fries, in our opinion, of each town and put them up head to head. And then the winner will be the supreme fry champion. <laughs> yeah? That's it. Fryer top. <laughs> cool. I hope, I, hope, I hope some of my friends are wa- listening and watching me. Please watch us on the radio later. No, I hope some of my friends are listening to this because they will be loving it. (laughs) (laughs) Let's hear some more Adam Baxter. Sounds good. This is, unless you want to, Darren. We are back here on the party on Stage. We're back here in studio with Adam Baxter. So how are you enjoying your time in St. John's? Uh, It's good. It's, I I find, uh, I'm getting a real taste of living uh, I guess in the proverbial round the bay kind of area where it's when you get in St. John's or when you go to Cornerbrook, it's like you do as much as you can and get as much stuff at stores that you can't get in Springdale or whatever town you live in as fast as you can do it. So, um, I mean, with, with the with all the rehearsing and playing the show and seeing what friends I haven't seen and going to Walmart and going to the mall and going along with Quaid and man there's just so much to do so I mean it's it's a whirlwind I'd, I'd like to maybe take a vacation here where I can like in the in nice weather where you know you can sit on the deck of the Sundance and mm. eat fries and <laughs> yeah so That's but weird. the time is going really well having a real good time I had no negative vibes at all so I'm really happy everybody's being wicked yeah yeah so, do you have any plans for, uh, well, obviously I'm assuming you have plans for the future, but I guess future in regards to your music, other than your EP release? Yeah, well, uh, the, the, you know, the long term is, 
I really want to get a full length record done with the band. I mean, I'm I'm loving the band that I have now. Mm -hmm. um, we introduced a new mandolin player last night, and he only had a few rehearsals with us. We basically sent him him all the songs and all the you know the the sheet music for it, and he just learned it and had it memorized and did it last night and nailed it. So I'm I'm really excited for the band to kind of progress and maybe add a couple more members, but. Right. The big goal is is to, well, there's two big goals. One is to, to be able to play in any town in Newfoundland and, like, just put on a great party and have everybody know that, like, when we're playing, we're going to have a laugh. Right. Right? Uh, and to get the full-length record out, because I think uh, a lot of these songs that I have uh, are done more justice by being completely filled out right um and that's kind of the progression i wanted to do with the the solo ep with sparse instrumentation have that as kind of like a teaser or maybe not a teaser just like say hey this is this is the raw version and then boom we go into a, a whole new set of 12 songs ready for a full length out on the shelves but that's that's a couple of years from now yeah like, you know especially where i'm funding it all myself mm -hmm. so I really shouldn't be, but that's it. <laughs> so you're probably going to laugh at me for this question, but... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, when are you coming back? Oh, well, um, I see I see what you were getting there, but... Oh, uh, let me think. Tentatively, it's looking like I'm going to be back sometime in August. Um, it's just too hectic right now, between now and the end of school. Right. I have a little bit of time in between uh, when when I'm done teaching for the summer and when I start doing the festival circuit. I got about I have one festival on July first. Then I don't have to be able to do another one until I believe the thirteenth or the twelfth. So it gives about ten days. Um, we were thinking we might drive to Nova Scotia to go visit mom and dad, so we're gonna we're gonna go with I call this home as opposed to going with coming back to you for this one. <laughs> see what I did there? I did see. Not bad, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, realistically, it's looking it's either gonna be early July mm -hmm. or late August. Um, and that's just how it goes, you know. I don't. I spent so many years playing four or five nights a week and just like being so up in everybody's face for so long that I think that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's in my best interest professionally to only be playing once every couple months. You know, there are a lot of artists around here who do that. And, uh, you know, provided we just keep doing our, our shows and the word keeps getting out, uh, I think, I think this will both both of the uh, the ideals that I had mentioned before will just kind of roll on and present themselves, hopefully. August. Cool. So I guess back to the shows that you're planning on playing for yeah. the documentary. Um, I guess what can people expect if they decide to go out and see you? Well, uh, right now, all that is booked is me, singer, songwriter, solo artist. Mm -hmm. So they'll get a they'll get a more kind of folky side of the whole thing as opposed to like the upbeat kind of groovy fun stuff that we do with the band. Not that the solo stuff isn't fun, but it's uh, it's you know it, it's going to be more. There's going to be a lot of dynamic contrast between quiets and louds. A lot of a lot of finger picking. A lot of you know a lot of nice soft stuff. Mm -hmm. So more of the actual showcase of the music that's going on as opposed to the whole entity that comes with like playing in a band. Right. However, I there are some options of me being with a band for some of these. So sometimes you might have a dance party, sometimes you might cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was going to ask you just during the break, but uh, you brought your guitar. Uh, would you like to play us a tune? I would love to. I will. I will. I'm going to play you my brand new song that I debuted last night. If that's okay with you. That sounds good really to me. That's really cool. It's, song, it's a song called The Brook, and if you are interested, uh, it's not up on my website. My website, by the way, is adambaxtermusic.com. However, it's not up on there. It would be up on my SoundCloud, which would be soundcloud.com slash adambaxtermusic. Uh, it's posted there. Free download, free listen. Have a laugh. It's just a demo for now, so it's completely available to everybody to listen to, but not to plagiarize. Just kidding. And 
Here we go. And this song is about um, me falling in love in Corner Brook. Some days grow cold from the breeze as time passes by. Some days are graced by the warmth. Then we will go outside. At the brook in the park, you'll receive such sweet serenade. This Saturday's been the best. When can I call you mine? When can I call you mine? Well, if time has moved, these seas have changed. I never would have set sail before today. Truth be told, you stole my heart on that day. My back in my robe when you're on my bed. This day's been graced by our warmth. Why would we go outside? Just let me squeeze your hand when we're in the air. You know I don't fly so well. Now that I call you mine Now that I call you mine well, If time has moved, these seas have change well, I never would have said sail before today Truth be told, you stole my heart on that day. On that day. On that day. With time is moved, these seas are changed. I never would have said sail before today. Truth be told, you stole my heart on that day. On that day. Back here one more time on the party on THMR. Um, yes, we are. We're going to let Adam Maxer have a shout-out party. 
Thank you so much, guys, for having me. First of all, it means a lot, and what you guys do for the music community here is unbelievable, and it's great. So thank you so much for doing oh, that. Thanks. Um, I would just like to also thank anybody who had had a listen this evening, and uh, if you're interested in checking out my stuff, super easy. Just check out HTTP for uh, whatever www.adambaxtermusic.com. <laughs> just check it out, and uh, that's got link to my Facebook page. That's updated the most in my Twitter feed. Uh, it's got music on there, videos, pictures, and uh, a few surprises. Check it out.